Good morning, good afternoon. This is Fabien Roch. I'm an associate professor of economics with Paris Dauphine University and I also work with Compass Lexicon, an economics consultancy. In the next few minutes, I want to discuss with you the experience to date uh, with the European carbon market in Europe, um, the European trading scheme. Now, let's look first at supply. Uh, we had three phases in the European trading scheme. Um, the first phase from 2005 to 2007 was really a trial phase. Um, we then moved on to the second phase, which lasted until 2012. And we have been since 2012 in the third phase. The fourth phase is currently being debated in Brussels and will start after 2020. In the first phase, as you see, we had cap um, on emissions, which was determined by the different countries themselves. And the sum of these different caps was forming the total EU cap. What was implemented later on, um, starting in um, phase three, was very much the fact that the EU first defines a total cap, and then this is apportioned to the different um, caps at the country level. You see also that aviation was included, started in 2012 in the total cap for emissions. If we now turn to um, demand, there's been a gradual extension of the coverage. First, um, in phase one, we had essentially power generation installations, energy intensive industries covered in terms of sectors, in terms of geographic coverage, it was primarily the EU27 member states. And the focus was very much on CO2. Phase two, we included aviation, from 2012 onwards, and we broadened participation to a number of non-EU member states, Norway, Iceland, Liechtenstein. In addition to that, we broadened um, the carbon market by including nitrous oxide. Phase three included some further energy intensive industries. Croatia joined the carbon market and PFC, perfluorocarbons, were added. Now, bringing demand and supply together, what did that do to prices? Well, we have had a contrasted evolution of prices. The first phase started with prices trading between 25 and 30 euros per ton. You see that prices collapsed before the end of 2006. The idea was um, very much that you could not bank um, your carbon emission allowances and therefore, when people started to realize end of 2006, 2007, that they had an excess supply, the price naturally collapsed to zero. We corrected that starting from phase two onwards, because you are now allowed to bank for future use your credits. And you see that prices um, started trading in phase two between 20 and 25 euros per ton. What happened quickly, however, is that the economic recession had an impact on the anticipated supply and demand. And therefore, we gradually saw a decrease in the price. The oversupply gradually built up to the point that today we estimate there is a very significant oversupply in the market, which has driven down carbon prices. This is, of course, leading to a lot of discussions about the phase four and the reform of the European carbon market. Um, that first led to the idea of backloading a number of allowances, which uh, will not be put in place um, towards the end of phase three in the market. And secondly, it has led to the introduction of a strategic reserve, which is in a way a price management system for the carbon market. So this is it for a quick tour d'horizon of the European carbon market. Thank you very much for your attention.